there isn't even the beginning of a theoretical account of what the necessary hidden variables might be. Zabine and nobody else is telling us what the hidden variables are. And that's the core of physics. I mean, that's how physics is done. Now, another person that um, who hasn't conceded uh, any any ground, at least to, to my knowledge, to your criticisms of her work is a uh, past guest in front of the show, Sabina Hassenfelder. Uh, many of her uh, channel audiences subscribes to this channel and are probably listening right now. Um, so you wrote an article back in early of the, earlier this year called The Fantasy Behind Sabina Hassenfelder's Super Determinism. Uh, and then you had a, a debate uh, with uh, my good friend Kurt Jaimungle as the as the mediator, moderator, however you want to call it. I, I personally think debates are almost pointless, but uh, because you know, very few people come away changed from their original perspective, they get reified and and, and more uh, sunk cost into their original philosophy. But first, would you mind uh, describing uh, the 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 notion of super determinism, and and perhaps steel manning or in this case steel womaning. Uh, Sabina's position uh, and uh, why she believes what she believes, what's accurate about that, and then um, why you guys have this continuing uh, kind of uh, friendly but but dispute nonetheless. So first of all, what is super determinism in your uh, mind? What does it mean to you? What's wrong with it? And then what's right about Sabina's uh, interpretation as a steel womaning uh, attempt? <laughs> yeah, it's a so lot there. Hard. I will still woman it yes. because a lot of people do present super determinism in a way that is not what Sabine is trying to get uh, um, to put forward. Some people confuse super determinism, for instance, with an argument against free will, and that goes way further than it needs to go for super determinism to, to make some sense. The claim is the following In experiments with entangled particles, we know statistically now, and this has won the Nobel Prize in Physics this year, after mm -hmm. 40 years of experimental confirmation, right. we know that the physical properties that we measure on a particle, the properties that define what the particle is, the properties that define physicality, such as angular momentum, which is a popular one in this kind of experiments, those properties are, are a function, are function of the experimental setup. In other words, what you, what you see about a particle depends on what you choose to measure about another particle entangled with the first one. So the particles don't, don't seem to have a priori physical properties. Their physical properties seem to arise from, from measurement. And it, it seems to be that the act of measurement is what brings physicality into existence, which I think is correct, by the way. Uh -huh. Now, in an attempt to try to save physicality, to say, no, no, there were physical particles there before. If you say that, then you have to explain why everything unfolds as if the act of measurement determined the physical properties. And the way to go about it in super, determin super determinism is to say that there are hidden variables uh, in the, the particles and the detectors that establish a causal chain in the act of measurement, whereby the setup of the measurement apparatus causally changes the particle in a non-local way, or even, in, uh, yeah, it would have to be a non-local way. Now, why do I think this is baloney? Why do I think this is a fantasy? For a number of reasons. One of them is to try to bring the assumptions that have to be made at the microscopic level, microscopic level, try to bring them into a level that we can relate to with our intuition. What super determinism requires is equivalent to the following. Suppose you take your camera and you want to photograph the moon at night, and then you set your aperture and you set your exposure time in your camera and you point the camera to the moon and you photograph it. What super determinism would say in this analogy is that what the moon is, the physical properties of the moon, such as its perimeter, its mass, whatever, are a function of the aperture and the exposure time in your camera. So uh -huh. if you would set your camera differently to a different aperture, a different exposure time, then the moon would be different. Uh -huh. That's what <laughs> is required. Uh, I think that is not intuitive. It's a, it's a rather extraordinary hypothesis. But to make it worse, there isn't even the beginning of a theoretical account of what the necessary hidden variables might be. 
Zabine and nobody else is telling us what the hidden variables are. And that's the core of physics. I mean, that's how physics is done. When, when Peter Higgs uh, uh, first proposed the Higgs boson back in the 60s, he gave us a full, well, a fairly complete characterization. He told us, I expect it to be found in this energy range. I expect it to decay in this and this particles because nobody has ever measured the Higgs directly. It decays before you, before it interacts with any measurement surface. So you have to know what it decays into in order to reconstruct the event and be able to say there was a Higgs in there. He also told us co coherently how the Higgs boson plays its role how it leads to inertia, in other words, to, to, to mass uh, uh, by means of the Higgs field, that sticky field that prevents things from moving at the speed of light all the time. So we had a complete map of what to look for when we started looking for it back in 1994. And I know because I was there when the, 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 the Atlas experiment was proposed and, and approved, uh, we knew what we were looking for. We knew where to look and how to look. But there is no such a thing for the hidden variables of superdeterminism. They are just a placeholder. And as such, an expression of faith. The faith is there has to be something, God knows what, that does, God knows how, what needs to be done for us to be able to hold on to our prejudice that physical entities have standalone existence and they're not epiphenomenal. I don't think that's good science. And in that debate, uh, Zabina, told to my face that she had, she had determined what the hidden variables are, that she had published a paper saying what the hidden variables are. Hmm. And when I looked at the paper, it was a toy model. In other words, those were the hidden variables of a fantasy universe, not hidden variables that are plausible or tenable in any way in this universe. So no, the, the hidden variables are just a, a, a placeholder for fantasies and wishful thinking as of this time. And to her credit, she did propose one experiment that in principle doesn't need the, the hidden variables to be determined in advance. It doesn't matter what they are, the experiment could produce a relevant outcome either way. The problem is, and I don't know how, how much detail you want to get here, um, that experiment uh, is non-falsifiable. In other words, because we don't know what the hidden variables are, once the experiment produces a negative result, we, you can always say, well, it, it, it just no, is not accurate enough. We didn't repeat the measurement fast right. enough uh, to, to account for entropy or anything else. No, I so it, it, it's not, it, it will never be a conclusive experiment because it cannot falsify the hypothesis that motivated it to begin with. So I don't think that's productive either. Mm -hmm. 